Okay, this is the second time I'm recording this video. The first one was just shy of 20 minutes long. And uh, first of all, the main reason I'm making this video is because um, I don't want to forget how to use this program because I played with it like a year ago, got into it a little bit, but didn't do much with it. And then I came back to it and couldn't remember anything I, I learned. Um, but we're gonna be looking at creating Doom levels using uh, Eureka Doom Editor, which should be in the repositories for your Linux distribution. Uh, you can also find it at SourceForge, which I'm not a big fan of SourceForge, but uh, that's what they decided to use. Uh, it is released under, I'm pretty sure it's the GPL. Um, and uh, again, there's gonna, gonna be a very quick overview. Uh, Doom, back in the 90s, I was obsessed with it. I made a bunch of Doom levels. It was really, really what got me. I was interested in computers before that, but that's really got me into programming, basically, even though I wasn't really doing programming with it. Doom, even before, even though it's open source now under the GPL, even before that, you could edit and modify every aspect of it. The graphics, the sounds, the levels, the music. You can even use a program called uh, Dehacked to actually modify uh, how the binary works and actually create new objects and um, just the fact that I could do something like that is like nowadays it's very easy to create stuff back then it was like wow I can make a computer do this it was amazing and it inspired me to do a lot more and I in fact I bought my first uh, scanner for my computer which would cost me over 300 bucks for a little feed through black and white scanner so that I could take pictures of my friends with my film camera scan it in then I would manually by hand color them and then try to put them in the doom game uh, I think also I mean there was a lot of reasons I got my first digital camera but it was also to be able to create things for doom but we're going to quickly look at this program. You have to understand that Doom is not a 3D game. It is a 2D game designed to look like a 3D game. And that's important when you're creating levels because levels can't be above each other. Basically, the levels are made out of these things called sectors. Sectors, I like to think of them as their rooms. And each room can have its own height for its floor and its ceiling, its own lighting level, and its own ceiling and floor textures. Um, if you want to have something of a different height in the same room, basically you create another sector inside that sector. Uh, and we'll look at that quickly. And I'll try to uh, give you a demonstration on, on how that all works. Back in the day, I used to use a very popular uh, editing tool called uh, DoText, I believe it was, D-E-U Text. Uh, it was a, a great program for DOS. Um, this program, is so much better than that. Uh, one of which it gives you a 3D view when you're um, in the editor so you can see what's going on or a 3D view, simulated 3D view. Uh, real quick though, when I did the first tutorial, the recording, which uh, you guys probably aren't gonna see unless you're on Patreon, Patreons, I, I left that, got that up there for you. It was kind of a mess of a video, which this one might be as well, but hopefully this one will be better. Um, I kind of had been playing with this program for an hour and kind of learned how to do some things, but didn't, kind of figured out a lot of things like for example if I go up to view I can click toggle to 3d view and I would toggle in and out to see things by clicking on here and going to here and there was no label here for a keyboard shortcut so I just assumed there wasn't and then I accidentally hit the tab key and realized oh tab brings you in and out of that and I found figured out a lot of the shortcut keys just by pressing keys on the keyboard because I had Google search, a YouTube search, trying to find tutorials on this application, and I couldn't find any. I think there's a game called Eureka out there, and stuff with that kept coming up, and the few YouTube videos I saw weren't in English and didn't even have audio for some of them. Um, and I came to this website and went, oh, key bindings for the system, and I went like this, and like, uh, this shows you some basic stuff, but it's not really a keyboard shortcut layout. I did not realize, because I didn't look hard enough, that right here, just a few lines down, there is a keyboard shortcut list which is what I was looking for. And there's even a PDF file here that you can little, have a little cheat sheet. Uh, so check those out on that web page. Um, I am going to now start editing. So again, it's Eureka. It's inside your repositories, at least on Debian-based systems. I'm assuming most uh, Linux systems. Um, I'm going to click New Project. And it's going to want you to create a WAD file. A WAD file is basically like a zip file that contains all uh, the assets for the Doom game. And I'm just going to create one called Tutorial. I actually have one from the first video I did. I'll just overwrite that. Save. 
Yes, replace it. Next, it's going to ask you, and you have to have a, a some sort of Doom WAD installed on your system. Uh, if you don't have a copy of Doom, uh, you can install from repositories Free Doom, which is a free implementation of Doom. Because although Doom is code is released under the GPL license, uh, all the assets, the art, the sounds, uh, the levels are also under a copyright, uh, which you need to purchase. Free Doom the point of that project is to replace all that stuff so you can play Doom uh, without having any of that proprietary stuff in it. Uh, I have my original copies of Doom on CD still, so I have Doom 1, Doom 2. This found that resource files, uh, you can create your own WAD files with your own graphics in it. You can also get some that people have created and you can load those up. So if you have new graphics and stuff and you want to see them in the editor, you can load those up here. But I'm just going to leave these as default because we're not messing with that stuff today. I've done videos on that stuff in the past. We're just going to create a level. I'm going to click OK and it starts you off with this basic sector here. This is a room. Now, uh, down at the bottom here, you can see that you have different modes and you have four different modes. Things, which are things, objects in your games, players, enemies, weapons, power-ups, that sort of thing. And then the other three are for actually creating the map that you're working with. Again, sectors are like a room. That's the room that you're in. Uh, they are made up of lines, which are your walls. And then you have uh, vertices here, which are the points that make up the walls, these little X's here. Now, to flip through those, you can usually you can click on this little menu each time, which would be annoying, uh, but it's real easy. Uh, things is T on your keyboard, sectors is S, lines is L, V is for vector. Other shortcut keys, if you come down here, you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel here. So you can also lock it in with this, but it's much easier to scroll your wheel. Grid on and off. Again, you can come down here and choose a grid size if you want, uh, but you can use G to turn the grid on and off. And then you can use your number row at the top of your keyboard to choose a size for your grid from one through zero here. Uh, the default is six. Uh, next you can see here it says free or snap. That's whether you're snapping to the grid or free. Uh, you can use the F key to snap to grid. So you can see right here, uh, if I go V into vertices mode, you can see I can add a vertices here. Uh, and it's adding it and I'm snapping a grid, but if I hit F, now I'm in free mode and I don't have to put it on the grid. A lot of times you're gonna to wanna to put it on the grid because it makes easier things to line. This program does a great job of lining things up for you. And Control Z a few times to undo those. Okay, so those are your basic uh, things. If you scroll here, you can see this arrow here, which is outside the room. First of all, if we go into things, you might have noticed there's four uh, little space marines here. And by default, this program creates an empty room for you and puts in, uh, players for multiplayer mode, co-op mode uh, for players. Um, so that's what those are. The arrow out here uh, is your 3D view. Uh, so if in not in the game, but in the editor here. If I hit tab to go into edit mode, you can see that we're looking at black here. If you gotta use WASD to move around and then your arrow keys to turn. And as you can see, there's our room over there. And then I can use W or front forward arrow to up arrow to move into this room. Uh, if you had your, let's say you had a big level going and you didn't know where your little 3D view was, put your cursor somewhere and hit uh, in the documentation, it says back quote, also known as back tick, which is the uh, thing that looks like a single quote or a uh, apostrophe on your number row right next to your one if you're using a standard US QWERTY keyboard. Um, I'm sorry, not that one, a single quote just a regular quote, uh, a, an apostrophe, will put the player where, or the view where you have your mouse keyboard. Uh, since I brought it up, that back tick or back quote, uh, what that does is originally when I first using this, started using this, I, you know, if I had multiple things selected, which selecting multiple things is a little weird in this. Um, so normally if you in most programs if you select something when you click something if you click something else it unselects the first thing this program doesn't do that as you click if you want to unselect a single item you have to click it again so that's that's that takes a little getting used to but if you had a lot of things selected and you want to unselect them well if we go up to edit here you can see uh control a is to select all control u is to unselect and i was doing that at first and that's a very awkward thing to do with your hands the u is very far away from the control key uh well if you read the documentation 
uh, that back tick on the number row will unselect everything. So control A selects everything, that back tick unselects everything. That's a lot easier than doing control U. I wish they would update. Basically, my biggest complaint about this program is just if I wish they would better label uh, the shortcut keys in the menus here. Other than that, it's a great program. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can go control U if that's easier for you to remember, but that back tick is a lot easier to do to unselect stuff. Okay, uh, again, I'm going over the shortcut keys here because that's very important to get into things, but now we're going to start diving into actually creating a level. I'm going to center click to drag my mouse around. So that's, that's your mouse wheel. If you click your mouse wheel down, you can drag the, the screen around here. Let's hit G to bring on our grid here. I'm going to do four to do it a little bit smaller. And uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to hit V to go into vertices mode. And you can see here uh, that we have a little, a little dot if we're going to add a vertices to here. Let's hit G or sorry, F to snap to the grid. And I'm going to hit space bar, space bar, space bar. And I'm going to draw a little room here. I'm going to then uh, hit that back tick to unselect those and drag that over here. Now, if I hit tab to go into 3D mode, you can see I create a little a little room over here, a little uh, sector. And we know it's a different sector. You can see there's a wall here, but if I hit S, I can select that sector or this sector. I now have them both selected. Let's go V again to go into vertices mode. And I'm just gonna hit space bar here, 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 and I'm creating a new vector or a new sector. So now I can use my little arrow keys. I hit tab again to go into 3D mode and I'm using my arrow keys to move around. Uh, so we create a new little sector there. Now, let's say we wanted that this sector, let's go ahead and hit S to go into sector mode. We can choose this sector here. And then you have some options here. So we have the ceiling and ground. What these are called in, in Doom are flats. Wall textures are called textures. You would think they would all be called textures, but they're not. They're, the ceilings are flats. Um, so right now I have two sectors selected. And if I start editing stuff, it's going to edit both of them, which we'll look into that more. But I'm going to click here to unselect that. So I only have this little walkway selected. I am going to hit tab mode just so I can see what's going on here. And I can hit this, this ceiling here to change the height of the ceiling. Uh, if I wanted to step up, I can make the ground go up like that. So now we have a little window. I'm going to put that back down to zero. I'm going to move this down. Now you notice if I, if I do this, now our textures don't really line up. And I can manually start changing if I hit tab into this mode I hit L now I'm now I'm in line mode so I have the walls selected I can um, adjust what the walls look like and I can adjust uh, where the textures line up so I can be like 10 on this adjusted the X which is the left and right so you can see that just there and Y is up and down so if I was to do uh, 10 there. You can see I can try to align that, which shouldn't be too hard for the most part if you stick to uh, keeping everything in um, uh, divisibles of 8. So if I hit 8 here uh, or 16, still it's not perfect. Let's do 12. It's kind of hard sometimes to align textures. Uh, but what I could do is hit Shift A and it auto aligns, which is awesome. Now again, back in the day, back in the 90s, I used Dutex, which didn't give you the 3D view. You had to create your map in a view like this, which didn't even have the textures, it was just lines from what I remember. Um, and then you had to go into the game to actually view what it looked like and then exit back out. And so you had to, you know, kind of do the math in your head and after a while you got good at it. But this is great that it just automatically does that. And this program does a lot for you for automating stuff, which back in the day was very hard. Lots of times uh, Dutex would give you errors, but then you had to figure out how to fix them yourselves. So where this program does a lot for you. And I'll demonstrate that in a little bit. Uh, but let's go ahead and go back into sector mode by choosing S. We still have our last sector selected. Tab just so we can see. And I'm going to uh, raise the ceiling back up a little bit. And then I don't know how to change to um, sector mode. Like if I hit, if I'm in here and I choose L, it, it changes the lighting. It like puts lighting all the way up. Uh, so that's different. I don't know how to change. I should look up, look it up. But I'm gonna go back in this view mo mode and choose L to choose those, and then I can hit uh, the lines, and then I can hit uh, Shift A to auto align that, which is great. So now I have a little tiny doorway, but it should still be high enough for me to fit through. Perfect. Let's tab back in this mode, S, 
Again, I'll hit back, tick to unselect everything. I'll choose this room. And real quick, I'm gonna show you over here to the side. There's a few different things. Again, I can choose the ground here and it lists all your flats for the ceilings and grounds. And I can choose that for the ground for that room. I can choose here and I can do uh, that for the, well, I actually have both these selected. Again, it doesn't unselect things automatically when you click something new. Uh, so I put that texture there or flat there, this, so now I have, and by default, we're looking at the floor here. You can change that in the view somewhere. I haven't really done it. Um, it's under, yeah, render. So I think you can choose how you want to render, whether you want to do floors or ceilings. I'm not going to even mess with that because I haven't messed with that yet. Uh, but now you can see I can go in here and I have uh, a different ceiling and ground texture or um, what did I say they were called? Flats. Let's go uh, L into line mode and automatically has all the walls for the lines that we selected or all the lines for the sector we selected. And so I can just choose these brick walls here. And now I have these brick walls. Now you might ask, why do we have all these different, we have six different uh, wall textures here for each wall. So here's the thing. Again, it's really a 2D game. So if you had a 3D game, this would be a block up here, this would be a block over here, this would be a block over here, but they're not like that. They're sectors, they're rooms, and each line or wall has three different settings. It has an upper, a lower, and a middle, and it has that for each side. So what we have here, when it says rail, that means it's blank. If I was to put something in this rail area here, you would see that texture here. So you can make walls, so let's, let's do that. Let's choose this and this. And I'm going to go like that, and that should have, there, It's it depends on what side your, uh, what do they call it, in Blender it's called normal, Wait, basically which way your fall, wall is facing. But now it looks like there's a wall there, and in the game you could walk through that as long as this isn't checked as impassable. If I click that, now you can't walk through that wall. If I click it again, you can now walk through that, but it would, so you can make secret areas that were with walls you can walk through, and that's how you would do that. Uh, other thing that I'll just quickly mention here is you have block monsters. So if you want to keep the monsters, the enemies, from going through into another room, you can do that. Otherwise, you want to do that sometimes. Otherwise, all your enemies end up all following you into one room. And you might want to keep them in a certain room. Um, so that will block monsters. Block sound. Enemies don't move until they see or hear you. So if you don't want enemies in the next room over to start moving until you get in that room, you want to block the sounds so they don't hear you shooting someone in the other room and then follow you. All depends on your level design. Anyway, I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to hit backspace, backspace, and erase out that te center texture. Uh, so real quick, we're, we've, we've got two rooms here. Um, oh, let me go back in here. So I have S, this sector selected. You can also choose the lighting, how bright it is. So let me turn this down. You have anywhere from 0 to 255. So a 256 value. Let me set this down to 50, which is gonna be a pretty dark room. Yeah, that's really dark. Let's make that 100. So it's it's a little darker now. So that's how you do lighting. So you don't have lighting sources like in a lot of 3D games, you're gonna have a lighting source and you'll have diminishing light as you get away from that light. To do that, if you ever are in Doom and you have like a hallway where it's brighter at one end and gets darker at the other, um, you would do that, well, Let's actually do that. Let's. I was going to make a stairway. Let's make a stairway and then have the light get darker as you go up the stairway. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit V again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, I'm going to do like this. Space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar. I don't know if there's a more efficient way to make stairs. It would be nice if there was a, like a, a button that you can press after creating something like this to automatically adjust them. Uh, but I'm just going to create, not a very long, just a little stairwell here. Now if I walk over here now you can see we have it looks like a hallway. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into S for sector mode and I'm going to select these and I can select them one at a time or if I back tick to unselect them all I can hit shift and select all of these and then click there to select that. What I'm going to do now is with all of them selected again what I edit over here is going to edit all of them so I can change the um, the ceiling and floor textures for that. Uh, let's do something a little bit nicer. Let's let's do that. Okay, so 3D mode, you can see the ceiling looks a little bit different than the ceiling. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit up on the ground here, and then I'm going to unselect this one. Up, unselect the next one. So what I'm doing is every time I click that, I'm raising the ground of all the ones that are selected, and then I'm deselecting uh, one each time and moving on up. So here we go. 
And now I can see that I have a hallway here or a stairwell here going up. Perfect. Now, if I wanted that hallway to be darker at the other end, it's not that long, what I would do is, and I actually haven't done this uh, in this editor yet, but it's the same concept as what we just did for uh, the ground, or for the raising the steps. I'm going to select them all. By default, uh, the editor creates them all at 176. I'm just going to go, boop, lower them all a little bit, deselect that one, lower that one a little bit, deselect it. And again, it's because we don't have true light sources here. Each room has its own brightness. So you have to fake things like diminishing light by doing stuff like this. Oops. And if I tab into this, you can see, oh, now it gets darker as you go up in here as if there's not lights. Uh, now, if you've ever played Doom, you might have areas where, let's uh, go ahead and vertices mode here, tab, tab. This is gonna be a long tutorial, but I'm going into a bit more detail than I originally did, but that's fine, that's fine. Uh, you know, it's 2018. If you still play Doom uh, um, mods, uh, there, there's still people creating them. So, and I would love for more people to create them because it used to be 20 years ago, people were creating them all the time. 10 years ago, a lot of people created them. Now you get people create a couple a year. You, you know, if you go to these places where they make uh, the, the new levels, um, it'd be great if more of you, because I plan, I'm going to try to start making more. <laughs> See if I can do one level a day, do that for a month, and I have a full uh, Doom. Uh, by default, it has 32 uh, levels uh, in it. 30 regular levels and then two hidden ones. Anyway, uh, so I have this sector here. I can choose the type and I can make it blink randomly. I can make it flash at a certain rate. And if you select one of these uh, and you want to undo that, you just select nothing. So let's go ahead and choose this room here. And let's just say we want it to blink randomly. And I don't think it will show it in here. No, you, you actually have to go in the game, which let's actually do that. Uh, so I'm going to hit control S to save. And then if you look under here, under tools, uh, you have testing game, which is control T. So something you might want to do before that is F9, which is, uh, it checks all, which is awesome. Um, so I have five non blocks, one side defined show. So it's going to show me those. Uh, and I'm not even sure what that means, but a lot of times when it has stuff like that, you just say fix. And it's probably from when I was messing with the textures of that of that pathway there. Uh, it fixes it for you automatically. Like I said, back in the day, uh, and then it tells me that I'm missing deathmatch starts, which by default we have co-op in there, but if you wanna have deathmatch, uh, you have to add deathmatch start areas. Uh, but once you have that, then you hit uh, Control T to test in game. Uh, it's gonna tell me to save because I just made some changes. And now I have to look in to see if I can set this. I have to tell it where my Doom Xcubule is because you might have more than one uh, that you want that you have on on your system and it just needs to know where the doom executable is and uh i put it in here i'll remember it this whole session but uh the um it doesn't remember it when i close out the game and restart so i'm gonna hit click open and i'm gonna hit this and we're gonna start the game up okay so this is our level there's our stairwell there that gets darker as you go up it here's a room that we just set a little bit darker and if we come in here I thought I set this to flash randomly. It didn't take, let's see. Let's go sector, choose the sector. It says blink randomly. Uh, I wonder if I have to set the, let's just do, let's do flashes. Save that, control S to save, control T to play. There we go. Now it's flashing at one hertz, I think it said. So that's how you can make a, a flashing room and there's different options for that. Now, as I said, uh, you can create sectors within sectors. So let's do that real quick. I'm gonna go V and I'm gonna go space, 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 space. S to go into sector. I am going to now change both of these to be something like this. There we go. And we can look over here and you can see that right there. So it's basically another room within a room and that's how you have to do these things. And what we can do now is we can change the height of this one for the ceiling and the ground. And now I can go T for things and I can hit space bar. And by default, it adds a little um, health bonus there. But let's go ahead and we can search for stuff here. If we want to search through all our items, we can scroll or we can 
type in like gun and I can add a mini gun here. Uh, if you're unsure, I have, we have um, categories here. I can go weapons and I can choose shotgun or super shotgun. But if I was to go into sector mode now, select that selector, I can hit control C, control V and lock this to the grid. I guess I'll put it right there. I can copy these and paste them in places and it copies everything in those sectors. So now I have a little area and a super shotgun on each one of those, which is great if you have different rooms uh, that you want to repeat. Like you design a room, you're making an apartment complex, you can design a whole apartment and then copy it over and over again. Let's go into T mode for things. And we have this one selected. I'm going to change that to a plasma. And then I have to click that to unselected. Click this one. And I'll do a uh, right, minigun there. And I'll unselect that. Select this one. And we'll do a chainsaw. And then we'll control S, control T. Now we're in the game. And I can come over here and select this, select this, select this, select this. Boom. Perfect. Now, as I said with the, um, with the lighting, if I go into sector mode, I can choose this one. And I can turn the lighting down to to 50 and if I save that and I look it's it's very very dark right there because that's the light setting for that sector so you have to you have to think manually that's unrealistic that the whole room is lit up but it's dark right there uh, you can make it darker but you don't want to go that extreme it's it's not gonna look right you can do it if it's part of your game design but it's unrealistic uh, and that's just one of those things that you have to think of yourself you know, I think it was, uh, what, it was, whoops. There we go. Did that not take? Sector. There we go. That's better. Okay. Now, what about things that hurt you? Let's, uh, go ahead and come here and I'll just, let's create, an, well, let's work on doorways first. Doors are very important. <coughs> So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into vector mode and I'm going to go space, 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 space. And then I'll grab or make a room on this side. And I'm going to show you why you should create door frames for your doors. So again, now I have this walkway here. And what I can do is S in the sector mode, choose this sector here, put the ceiling down to zero. And if I go into the 3D mode now, it just looks like a wall. Now, let me go into line mode with L. Back to, to unselect everything. I'm going to select, first of all, this one. You notice when you select a wall, you have a line pointing out on one side of the wall. And right now, these are both pointing down. You want them pointing out because we're going to make these walls clickable. To make the walls clickable, you can only click on the side that that line is on. I forget what that's called. In Doom, in Blender, these would be called uh, the the um, normal, and you would want to flip normal. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to hit F1 and say flip. So now it's pointing out. Now I'm going to select this one. I'm going to change the texture to this door here, and go to tab mode here. And there's our door. But you notice that you can see because it's repeating the texture up here. You can see that texture all the way up, which is looks weird, especially once the door starts moving. But let's finish creating this door here. I'm going to say S, choose this sector. Now you have this tag over here. And you want to give this tag, this uh, sector its own unique tag. Now when you get a lot, it's like, oh, what number am I at? If you click refresh in this program, it's going to add, automatically add the next number that's available. So this is tag one. This sector is, and you can give more than one sector. Like if you have multiple rooms that you want, uh, sectors that you want to be doors. So again, this is just a sector with the ceiling down all the way. And that's how we're going to create a door. And everything's created with these sectors. So this is tagged as one. So now we're going to hit L and we're going to make sure that we have just these two doors, walls, uh, the lines pointing out, selected, and we're going to give them a tag of one. So now they're linked to that sector because it doesn't matter that they're touching that sector because you can put a switch for that door all the way over here. It doesn't matter. It can be anywhere. Uh, but now we're going to say with those lines, those walls selected, choose, and here I'm going to type in door, and you have some different options. I'm just going to choose this first one, which is open door. Now I'm going to hit Control S, Control T to play the game. Now I can come over here, click this, and oh, something's not right. I know exactly what's not right. 
So what it's trying to do is it's going to open this sector to the um, to match the ceiling of the sector next to it. I must have, see this sector that we just made the door have, the ceiling set to zero, let's unselect that, let's select this sector, it's set to zero as well. I must have had that selected when I was changing the height of this ceiling and that's something that's, that you need to make sure you don't do. I'm just gonna click 128 here, it makes the ceiling 128 from the ground. Now save, control T. Now I should be able to click this and it opens up. And again, it opens up all the way there and it looks kind of weird having the door texture like that. It's, it's just weird because you had two doors there. Also look at the texture inside here. It's just a regular wall texture and that looks kind of weird. So you wanna, when you're designing your level, give them textures that make sense. But as I said, door frames are something that you want. So let's come in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit three on the number row at the top of my numbers here to make my grid even smaller. I'm gonna go V uh, to go into vector mode. I'm gonna space, 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 space. So I create a very small sector. I'll create a slightly bigger one for our door. Another one here that's small and that's our door frame. And then I'll create a room to go in. I'm just gonna do this. Like so. I'm gonna choose S for sector. I'm gonna make sure this one's unselected. And then I'm going to select this one and make the ceiling zero. And then I'm going to go into 3D mode, walk into here so I can see that door is all the way down now. Let's give it uh, the L for lines and I'm going to give it this door texture. So now it looks like this door here. Actually, what if I choose this? Okay, I made it too wide. Let's readjust this. So back tick to unselect everything. And I'm gonna grab these and pull them over here. I just went one, two, four, far, there. Now we have a different door texture on that one. And uh, this one's actually taller. So let's go back to this, whoops. Had the wrong thing selected. Back tick, line, select this one, select this one. And we're gonna go that door. So that's what it looks like now. So you notice we still have this texture up here. So what we can do now is S, this sector, this sector, 3D mode, and then we can start lowering the ceiling of our little door frame. Boom. Now we have a door frame with a door that will go up. Uh, again, we have to now choose our sector here. Make sure we unselect those two sectors. I'm gonna click refresh, which gives that the next available number, which is two. And I am going to then go L for line mode, back to, to unselect them all. I'm gonna select this one, F1, flip that so it's facing out. Otherwise we'd go in that room and not be able to get back out once the door closed. Select these and I'm gonna give that the tag of two as well. I'm gonna to choose to open the door. And now I should control S, control T. I can go in here, that's our original door. Now this one makes a little more sense. Uh, and again, I, I, right now this is the door texture right here for that and there's actually textures that uh, look like they should be uh, for a door going up that you probably wanna pick. I'm not gonna worry about that now. It'll be up to you to choose what textures you use. Now, let's talk about damage from lava. So one of the big things in Doom was you had lava that would hurt you. So I'm gonna go into vertex mode here. I'm gonna create a sector inside here, spacebar. I was gonna give it kind of a roundish bean shape here. So that's a sector S, I'm gonna choose it. I'm gonna choose the ground plane and I'm gonna make it lava. The lava, does not hurt you by default. Um, I actually think back in Dutex by default, if you create, gave something certain textures like uh, the nuclear waste or the lava, it would automatically set it to hurt you. And I didn't even, don't even know if I knew how to change that if I wanted to. Uh, this doesn't, which is good. What we're gonna choose is we're gonna choose and for, with that sector selected, and again, we had like lights flashing. Well, we have options for damage. You can do damage 5%, 10%, 20%. Uh, those are your options. So I'm just gonna choose 10 here. Save, run the game. Now if I go in here, and I go in here, now if I stand on this lava, ooh, ow, ooh, ow. Every time it flips, it's gonna take away 10% damage, and I didn't put the right texture on the back of this door. But I did flip it the right way, so it will open again. Which, by the way, is how you would make uh, one way of making hidden, hidden rooms. So in Doom, you have uh, secrets. So if I wanted to create a secret, uh, what I could do is V here, uh, and I can create a little 
room here, like so. Sector, backtick to unselect. I can choose this, I can put it down to zero. Uh, and now, if I was to go in there, you can notice you don't even see that because, well, is that text, the texture's not aligned 100%, it's because, let's go into line mode here, backtick to all, there, now the texture should line up properly. Um, and I can make this the same thing. Let me go ahead and choose this and flip that so it's pointing out. I'll choose both of these and uh, actually choose the sector. I'm gonna give it a tag of three and then go back into line mode, unselect these sidewalls here. And I'm gonna give that a tag of three, choose, and I'll say open door. Now I will save that, run it. And if I come in here, come in here, there is a, uh, door right there that we can't see, but if, if you look on the map, you can see it, it's a white line. I'll click that and it opens. Now, that's how you would hide something, but that doesn't actually make it a secret room. Uh, so if I sector select, and I actually haven't done this in this program, I'm gonna choose, I, I assume I choose that, choose just because I understand how Doom works, and in here, right there, secret area, boom. So this area is a secret area. And uh, so you wanna make whatever sector you go into a secret area and that will make it so it counts it as a secret area. If I save and run this now, uh, in newer version ports of Doom, original Doom you didn't have this, if I hit tab, you can see in the map mode up on top left there under the number of monsters we have, we have secrets, zero of one. So now if I go in here, go in here and come over here, still says zero, but when I walk in here, boop, I have one, and you notice it's pink on the map. We didn't have that in the original Doom either. A lot of these ports add a lot of nice functionality there for you, especially the, being able to have know how many secrets you have left, so you know to look for them. And uh, monsters uh, is great, so you know you know whether you're close to beating the level if there's just a few monsters left or a lot. Anyway, going back in here, and the map is a lot better in newer versions of uh, ports of Doom. Okay. Uh, we haven't added uh, items yet, so things. T, we've only, well, we add these here, but let me go ahead and hit spacebar to add one here. I'm going to go to monsters. I'm going to add in a monster here, chain gun guy. Now, you notice the arrow here, that's which way he's facing. Again, if I have him facing this way, let me go ahead and save and run this. If I go in here, he doesn't even see me. He won't see me until I get in front of him, or he hears me like, shoot, now he hears me, and now he's going to come and attack me. So... Uh, if I was to restart this level, and I was to shoot in here, now if I open this door, you, oh, he didn't hear me. I must have these walls set to no sound traveling through, or maybe the door does block it. If, uh, let's go ahead and go in here, and what I'll do is, where there's room without a door, I'll paste in this guy, I'll make sure he's pace, facing that corner so he doesn't see me, save and run it. So he's in here, Right? Yep, there he is. He's in the dark, just hanging out in the corner. Kind of creepy and weird little Blair Witch thing going on here. Uh, if I'm in this room and I shoot, boom, he just heard me and he's going to be coming for me here. There he is. So if you didn't want that to happen, we would go to lines and I think I just have to do it there. I think these walls will automatically uh, make it, but I'm going to say block sound. And that block sound, let's see if that works. So I just shot, let's see. Oh, he did hear me. So I think what I'm gonna do is just uh, sector select and then line select. So I have this whole sector selected. Now I'm gonna say block sound, save, run. And now if I shoot, I don't think he'll hear me. Yeah, see he hasn't heard me because the walls of this room are blocking the sound from the other rooms. All depend on your level design. Do you want that guy coming when someone makes a sound here or do you want the monsters to be in a certain position when someone walks in this room so they start attacking when he walks in. Uh, another thing to do if I did uh, come in here and make a noise, now he's going to start coming here in a second and if he's smart at all, he's looking for me, come on buddy, I'm over here, where you go? Oh, there he is, ah, well, anyway. He can walk through that wall because I haven't blocked it from monsters. If I wanted to keep him in that room so he didn't come into the other room, I can set that wall to block monsters. Again, impassable is for you if you want to make it so that the player can't get through a wall. 
Okay, almost done here. This is way longer than my original tutorial, but I feel like it's going way better. Let's go back into thing mode by hitting T. So you have different difficulty levels in Doom. Uh, <clears throat> one of it makes, as it gets harder, the monsters move faster, they shoot faster, they're just better overall, but you also have options to, let's say I want in um, hard mode for there to be four bad guys in here, but in easy mode only two. Uh, you have options, so let's select these two guys. Right now they're in easy, medium, and hard. I'm gonna uncheck it. So in easy mode, uh, these two guys will not be here. So there'll only be two guys in this room in easy mode. In medium and hard, there'll be four. So you can adjust that. Another thing is, uh, let's say I put, uh, I wanna make things easier. I can say health, I can put, you know, a couple of health packs around here. And now I'm gonna select these two. Actually, let's just do a caddy corner. And I'm gonna say here, oh, and it remembers the last setting. So right now, these are only available, all four of these are only available in medium, easy, medium, and hard. So now they're available in all. Now I'm gonna uncheck some of these and say, okay, in hard, and medium, I don't want. I only want there to be two. So in easy, you have four health packs. In hard, you only have two. So you can do that. Now, if I was to check one of these, like this guy here, and uh, oh, check that guy there, and uncheck it so it's in none of them, the game will run okay. But if I hit F9 here, it's going to check all errors, and it's going to say one unspawnable thing. What it's saying is you created something in this, but it will never appear in the game because it's not set to be in any of the um, difficulty levels. So. I can say show and it will show me the item. If I hit F9 again, I can just say fix and what it does is it automatically checks all of those. So now that item will be in all of those. Again, I have two tag sectors without undefined lines. So I did something wrong in creating these walls. The game's working fine, but technically those are errors that could cause problems. Um, and unfortunately there is no uh, apply fresh. Okay, so when I clicked apply, it, it no, it didn't fix those. So it shows those, um, and I'm not 100% sure what the problem is there. It's not an option to auto-fix those, and everything's working fine, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I do want to say I had an error like that once. I saved it. When I came back into the game and opened it, it told me there was an error with certain things, and it fixed them for me then. Um, if the game's playing, get, the game's playing all right. Um, but what something like that could be, is you could have a vector that's not connected to something, uh, and lots of times it will fix by removing those or merging those things. Uh, but just the fact that the F9 does puts forth an effort to to fix things for you and at least shows you them is awesome. Um, so we have two tag sectors without matching defined lines. So sector. Oh, at some point this sector got changed to four. That's an issue. That one as well. So these actually probably aren't working in the game. So it's a good thing it told me that. Um, so let me go ahead and save and run this in the game. This door probably, oh, it's still open, opening. Is this one still opening? That's, that's interesting. Um, so what it's telling me here, that's tag before. Let me go into line mode here. These walls are tagged with zero. See, that's, that's, I don't know how that's working. I must have cloned something at some point. Is there more than one wall there? Uh, my tags are messed up is basically what it's saying, but it's still working. So that is something I would want to look into before I sent this game out into the world, but it's working, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, but basically what I think it's saying is this sector is tagged as four, and there's nothing linked to four. There's no wall as in this when we set it so these switches open the sector, it was set to sector two, I believe, and the walls were set to sector two. Well, now it's saying sector four, and that's just weird. Anyway, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Uh, oh, and then of course, exiting levels. That'll be probably the last thing I show you. Uh, and there's more, like when it comes to walls and switches, uh, you can have, um, a lot of different things when you go to choose. Like I said, there's a lot of different things there. But what, basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm real quick, I'm gonna do this real sloppily. I'm just gonna go into vertex mode, spacebar, and spacebar. So I added a little 
line segment here. I'm going to choose that line. I'm going to change. I'm going to type here. I'm going to type in switch. So it brings up all my different switches. I'm going to choose this one here because it should somewhat. Oh, did I still choose that? Boom. Uh, let's go into 3D mode and go over here. I have a switch on the wall. The texture is not quite uh, lined up properly. I, I didn't make it wide enough. So let's go ahead and go into vertices mode here. I'll pull that over there. Am I selecting the right wall here? It seems like it's still too, okay, vertices. Pull it open here, there we go. Okay, so we have a switch on a wall, textures lined up nicely. Let's go ahead with L for lines, choose this, go to choose. And we have all these different options like opening walls. Let's go in here and uh, filter this out and say exit. And you have uh, exit level, Secret level exit, exit level, secret level. What's the difference? Okay, so you see we have S1, S1, W1, W1. So you can have an exit and go to the next level or exit and go to a secret level. When you have an S for switch, W is for walking through. I'm assuming the W is for walking through, walking through the wall. If you want to have it so when you walk in a room it ends the level, which people do a lot, it would be one of these W ones. But we just want to switch so when we click on it, it ends the level. Save that. Or click that, save that, control T again to run it. I can come in here. Oh, bad guys see me, run away. Flip, and it goes to the next level. We haven't created the next level, so it's just going to go to the next level in the original WAD file. And that's it. We created a level. Uh, only 46 minutes so far in this recording, uh, which is double what I did last time, but I felt like this went a lot better. I'm, I'm, I'm more familiar with the keys and stuff now. Uh, but let me know what you think below. Uh, I definitely think, especially if you're new to programming or even just any type of game, Doom is very simple but can do a lot. You can learn a lot from it. The source code's all open. You can modify it very easily. The level design is very simple, which makes it easy for you to create things that still look good. Um, with real 3D games out there that we have now, you can create spectacular things, but it takes a little more a little more effort. Where this, you can create something that looks pretty decent pretty quickly. Um, and I recommend anyone who does any type of programming, especially game programming to play with Doom, play with the editors, play with the source code, because you get the basic concept on how games, even modern games, you can understand the concepts better. When I play Doom, I'm a better Doom player because I know how the levels work and I know the concepts of how the sectors work and stuff like that. And I can find secrets and understand what I'm, what's trying to be accomplished and also appreciate what some people do because I understand how the game is created better. And I think that uh, to become a better programmer, looking at how other people create stuff is very useful. And um, uh, John Carmack uh, is a genius. His game design was a genius for its time, but it still holds up today. Look at the source code, create levels. Even if you only do it a little bit, I think it will help you learn, even if you want to create modern 3D games, the concepts here will, will teach you something very useful and make you a better programmer and game designer. So check it out, play with it. Again, this program is called Eureka. It should be in your repositories for your Linux distro. If not, um, you can go here, uh, eureka-editor.sourceforge.net. Uh, get it there if you're on some operating system that doesn't have it in the repositories or you have an operating system that doesn't have repositories. Uh, go ahead, check it out. Thanks for watching. If you did like this and want to see more, go ahead and comment in, in below and let me know. To be the truth, I'll probably do some more on this in the future. I might do uh, a breakdown, uh, shorter videos on all this in the future, just because I think it's very useful. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope that you have a great day. Oh, filmsbychris.com, Chris of the K. Check it out. Have a great day.